Now, in addition to considering that mandate, the Supreme Court's also going to be hearing cases that could set new limits on campaign contributions and a case on affirmative action. Mark Furnish is a criminal defense attorney and a, he is a professor at a Brooklyn Law School and he has argued, by the way, before the Supreme Court. Thanks for being with us this morning. How are you, Dell? Thanks for having me. That ruling by Justice Sotomayor, right. what impact is it going to have on the overall Affordable Care Act itself? Well, a case is going to be heard this term on that specific provision of the Affordable Care Act and it's a very similar issue and the issue is uh, whether corporations can effectively opt out of providing health care uh, coverage for birth control on religious grounds. So it's sort of an extension of the Citizens United case uh, from a couple of terms ago. And the core issue is whether corporations have religious rights under the First Amendment that are tantamount to the speech rights uh, the court afforded them in the Citizens United decision. It's an interesting ruling because Sonia, Somo uh, Sonia Sotomayor was a justice who was picked by President Obama. So it appears that his personal choice is coming out against him. Well, that's often the case with justices on the court and they don't come out the way uh, the president who appointed them might anticipate. But in that case, the claimant in the case is actually uh, a group of nuns. It's a religious institution, whereas the case that's actually going to be heard on the merits on this issue are just regular old corporations that are seeking the same religious light, rights that those nuns obviously possess. Now, do you expect other groups to mount similar challenges? Well, there'll be tons of friends of, of the court briefs pouring in on the case. Many of them have already been approved. So I actually don't expect a slew of them. Uh, this case fits the Roberts Court's sort of incremental approach. They obviously don't like the Affordable Care Act, but Roberts found a way to salvage it the last time, and this gives them a chance, not that they're girding for it, but to knock out part of it without doing massive surgery on it. Let's talk about campaign contributions, and I want to show the audience a graphic because this is a very confusing situation. Right now, individuals limited to about $48,000 in contributions for all candidates a little more than $74,000 for all parties and political action committees or PACs. That brings a total of $123,000 during a two-year election cycle that can be given to a candidate. So do you see the cases before the court affecting anything concerning the November elections in 2014 and the 2016 presidential elections? Yeah, I really don't. I think there's a lot of hand-wringing and sound and fury about this, but the difference between direct donations on the one hand and political spending on causes on the other. The line is so blurry these days because you have causes that effectively act as shills for candidates' positions. So I think it's a lot of, uh, it's more symbolic than real. And, you know, the argument which occurred back in October uh, seemed to suggest that the court might strike it down. I don't see that happening. And the reason why is that this is a court that has proven sensitive uh, to public outcry over unpopular decisions. Citizens United is a deeply unpopular decision, and I don't see the Chief Justice taking that step at this point to uh, f stir even more controversy about the court's political bent. Affirmative action back on the table. Yeah, uh, back on the table, and that one I see maybe coming out a different way. Uh, the issue in that case is basically whether the voters of a state uh, can pass a referendum abolishing affirmative action. And this court has proven itself in, in DOMA, for example, in the DOMA case, to be a very pro state Defense of Marriage Act. Yes, uh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, pr very pro states' rights court. And it's proven in the Voting Rights Act case that uh, when the underlying rationale for a given remedial measure has eroded, uh, the court won't hesitate to knock that out. And it may be that the time has come. Uh, to allow states to suspend, to suspend affirmative action. Mark, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Mark it. Mark Furnish, by the way, with Brooklyn Law School. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me.